Hello, and welcome to my podcast. My name is Peter Doherty. I'm a Catholic priest and a psychologist who integrates both psychology and scripture studies to understand the Gospels and to seek out pastoral teachings for Christians in these modern times. The Gospel for today's podcast is Mark chapter 9, verse 2 to 10. This Gospel will be read in churches on February the 25th, 2024. This Gospel is very different from all the Gospels we have heard. It describes a mystical vision experienced by Jesus, Moses, and Elijah, Peter, James, and John. Scripture scholars and theologians have wondered what this event means. Some have even suggested that this Gospel is a misplaced post-resurrection account. That theory makes sense, but my preference is always to work with the Gospels where they are. The account is also theological, with Moses representing the law and Elijah representing the prophets. The cornerstone of the Jewish faith is the faith is the pardon me the law and the prophets. One could argue that this vision is about Jesus being the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. I would like to make a few points for your reflections. Peter's response clearly indicates that he, he did not understand what was happening. I don't blame him. I'd be wondering too. While we may cringe at the inappropriateness and the naivete of his response, in fairness to Peter, he's being hospitable. He's concerned that Jesus and the two visitors will have accommodation and be taken care of. Peter's experience is similar to our experience of the divine. We often misunderstand and miss recognizing the divine in our lives. We have the benefit of hearing the story numerous times. We have a better understanding of what has happened. Peter, however, is experiencing this for the first time and so interprets the event from a very human perspective. Peter recognized that Jesus, Moses, and Elijah are going to eventually need shelter, and St. Paul in his letter to the Corinthians speak about this reality of trying to experience the divine through the human experience. Paul writes, For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face, now I know in a part, but think I will know fully. The Gospel in this podcast is about recognizing the divine, the Holy Spirit, in our lives. I suspect the reason why we don't experience the Spirit, or, or the Spirit seems absent, is because we're not expecting to see the Spirit. I cannot help but wonder how many times we have missed the Spirit working in our midst. So my question for you today is, what does God have to do to get your attention? A related question could be, what has to happen for you to recognize the working of the Spirit in your life? These are important questions, as our faith will not mature unless we have the eyes of faith to recognizing the Spirit amongst us. Without these experiences, our faith becomes more of a theology than a dynamic, living, and changing experience. I have come to the conclusion that we make the same mistake Peter made when we fail to recognize the Spirit in our midst. So what are the signs of God's presence? It's not an easy question to answer. I believe it's a very personal thing, but I will try to present you with some ideas. Sometimes the Spirit comforts those who are afflicted, and other times the Spirit afflicts the comforted. Sometimes we may feel uncomfortable because we're being challenged by the Spirit. I urge you to remember the opportunities that came up in your life that you were not expecting or had earned. Rather than seeing them as coincidental, could they also be a sign of the Spirit in your life? I encourage you to reflect back on your life, the good times, the struggles, and look for signs of God's Spirit guiding and supporting you, particularly in the tough times in your life. I wonder if some of our insights, ideas, and creativity have their roots in God's presence. We may miss, dismiss these times as being lucky or being in the right place at the right time, or simply see the event as being coincidental. I invite you to read 1 Kings chapter 19, 11 to 13, where God appears to the prophet Elijah. This passage says so much about how God relates to us. Let me read it to you because it's, it's pretty significant. The Lord said, Go out and stand in the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountain apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. 
And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of his cave. Our God is very quiet. He will not force us to listen. That is one of the reasons why I always encourage people I am directing to take time to pause and reflect. Often, is, often in the busyness and the chatter of our day, we miss the gentle voice of God. We have to choose to make ourselves available. The second point I want to bring to your attention is that Peter wants to hold on to the experience and doesn't want to let it go. It's natural to want to hold on to the, to the experience of being close to God. But spiritual experiences are meant to be a brief, but to strengthen us for what is to come. The Gospel ends with Jesus telling the disciples not to tell anyone. This is known as the Messianic secret. Frequently, Jesus requested those who witnessed his miracles not to talk about what they saw. There are likely several reasons for this. Likely, Jesus did not want people getting distracted by the miracles and paying less, less attention to what Jesus was trying to teach them. I suspect Jesus did not want their faith based on witnessing miracles, but rather have their experience of the Spirit in their lives, growing their faith. I can imagine the disciples trying to understand what Jesus meant by rising from the dead. Of course, it was only after the resurrection, and perhaps even Pentecost, that the disciples gained an understanding of who Jesus truly was. It may be for us, too, when we reflect back on events in our lives that, would, that at the time we didn't understand. Maybe we didn't have the maturity or the experience to understand. I suspect the same dynamic is at work in our spiritual lives as well. Thank you for listening. Every Sunday I release a new podcast focusing on the gospel for the following week. I invite you to listen to all the podcasts, and I hope the re reflections are useful to you. If you have any questions or concerns, I can be reached by email at peter.doherty, D-O-H-E-R-T-Y-O-M-I, at gmail.com. I also like to t uh, take this opportunity to thank uh, Mr. Richard Coulomb, who's served as a reviewer for this, this podcast. Thank you very much. God bless and have a great week.